right, I have a thumbs up, which means that we are live for our Facebook. It is 530. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to our recess meeting on March the 21st. Um, if you would, please, we will call this meeting to order, then we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by an invocation by Alderman Sistrunk, and then a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Loving God, grant us the grace and patience we need to address the challenge that we face tonight. Help us not to overreact, but to respond in ways that are thoughtful, mindful, and offer constructive ways forward. Grant us wisdom. Amen. Again, thank you everyone for being here. We appreciate your presence. Uh, our first order of business will be approval of the official agenda with consented items. And I do want to um, ask the board uh, to insert an executive session after the board business item and prior to the community development item B1, if you would please, um, an executive session. And we can go into closed determination to determine the need. So, if you would. Um, and with that, Alderman Carver, any changes to the official agenda or the consented items? No, ma'am. Alderman Rupp? No, ma'am. Alderman Brooks? No, ma'am. Alderman Bain? No, thank you. Alderman Sistro? Um, if, if everybody's okay uh, with board business A, the consider consideration of calling for a public hearing on an ordinance to uh, provide tax abatements in certain areas, I'd like to put that on consent. It is just calling for the public hearing, and we'll have lots of opportunities to discuss it over the next couple of meetings. Okay. Anyone have any objection to putting that on the consent to call for a public hearing? Anyone? All right. Seeing none, we'll place that on the consent agenda. All right. Um, Vice Mayor Perkins. No, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll insist that was the last item. That was the only item? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Alderman Vaughn. No, ma'am, thank you. All right, with that, I need a motion to approve the official agenda with <coughs> consented items. So moved. A motion from Alderman Ruff. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Brooks. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, thank you. I will read the consented agenda items. First is consideration of the minutes of the March 3rd, 2023 work session of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Starville. Second is consideration of the minutes of the March 7th, 2023 regular meeting of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Starville. Then under Board of Business, newly added, we have consideration of calling for public hearings to adopt an ordinance for tax abatements for specific businesses located in the Central Business District or in Historic Districts. Under Community Development, we have Item 2, which consideration of the CMP 23-01, a request for a renewal of a conceptual master plan to determine use designations for two parcels zoned optional district located on Highway 25 with parcel numbers 119-29-006.02 and 119-32-002.01. Number three is consideration of a final plat 23-03, a request for final plat approval for Encore subdivision located on the north side of Academy Road and the south side of Lynn Lane, directly east of Starkville Academy in a C zoning district with parcel number 1021-00-013.06. Number four is consideration of PP23-01, a request for preliminary plat approval for Camden Green Subdivision, located on the east side of Reed Road, plus or minus 930 feet north of West Side Drive in a TN-N zoning district with parcel number 118K-00-035.00. Under engineering, we have consideration of accepting the low quote from the welding works in the amount of $6,850 for the installation of a guardrail on Washington Street. Under finance administration, number two is request acceptance of the February financial statements. Number, um, under, number one, under human resources, request authorization to hire Adam Frazier as a certified Starkville police officer. Under Parks, number one, we have consideration to purchase a gym divider for the Travis Outlaw Center gym from Grand Slam at a cost of $47,850, the lower of two quotes. Number two is consideration of accepting the lower quote from Robertson Floor Service for the refinishing and repair of the gym floor at the Travis Outlaw Center in the amount of $42,000. 
Number three is consideration of the approval of the lower quote for the three concession stand ovens by kitchen restock in the amount of $22,158. Under Police Department Item 1, we have request approval to apply for the 100% reimbursable fiscal year 24 Mississippi Department of Homeland Security grant for equipment and automated license plate readers in the amount of $29,985. Item B is request approval to apply for the 100% reimbursable fiscal year 24 Mississippi Department of Homeland Security grant for equipment, fingerprint identification system, and digital forensics equipment in the amount of $65,785. Under Sanitation Department, we have request authorization to reject all proposals pursuant to Mississippi Code Annotated 31-7-13 sub R for solid waste commercial pickup in the city of Starkville, Mississippi. Under Utilities, Item 1 is request authorization to approve the final pay estimate for the Babylon Road Sewer Edition in the amount of $36,709.05. Number 2 is request authorization to accept the lower quote from the Welding Works to install the storage canopy in the amount of $9,450 for the pipe storage for water division. Number 3 is request authorization to accept the lower quote from Fair Price Landscaping to provide landscaping services at utilities locations in the amount of $6,500 per month. And number 4 is request authorization to approve change order number 1 to add 42 calendar days and a contract increase of $30,995 for the 2022 Startwell Sewer Rehab Project at Green Oaks and Rolling Hills subdivisions. And that concludes the consent agenda items. Thank you, Mayor. Glad to do it. Um, all right, next item under uh, announcements and comments. I have the pleasure, again, of introducing employees, which is new employees, which is always great fun for all of us. We love seeing new faces. And uh, so I will, I will start first. This is, uh, we've got quite a few. We've got nine, actually. So um, we, will, we will bring forward sanitation department. Come on, guys. Come on up here. Let's do it as a group. So first we have this department head, <laughs> Mr. Smiley. How are you this evening? We, we have Antonio Macon. There we go. All right, Mr. Macon, nice to see you. Um, he is from Starkville, Mississippi. He previously worked at McDonald's and Taste Restaurant as a cook. In his spare time, Antonio enjoys reading and playing with his dogs. He's excited to be part of a team in the sanitation department, and we are happy to have you. Taste makes some really good pasta. That was part of you. Okay, cool. All right. Raymond Shelton. Mr. Shelton, okay. He is also from Starville. He previously worked on the Columbus Air Force Base in landscaping, where he was a dedicated and dependable employee for many years. Raymond appreciates the opportunity to work for the city of Starville and looks forward to future endeavors with the city. We welcome you to Starville. And then last but not least in sanitation, we have Stevenson Tutton. Mr. Tutton is from Crawford, Mississippi, but now resides in Starville. Stevenson initially got his start with the city through Ability Works, Inc., community-based work experience program. After four weeks of being dependable and hardworking, he was hired on full-time with the city. He loves spending time with his kids and family, and in his spare time, he loves to fish. Welcome aboard. We appreciate you being here. We will look forward to seeing you out, gentlemen. Thank you. All right, we have two firefighters. All right, John Douglas Arnold. Give me a hand. There you go. All right. Thank you. J.D., to your friends and family, he loves to hunt and fish. He is a follower of Christ and looks forward to serving the city of Starkville. Have you done anything in, in the fire department before? Is this first? Awesome. Well, congratulations and welcome aboard. And James Kellen Pumphrey. Mr. Pumphrey is from Houston, Mississippi. He loves being outdoors and active. He is excited to be a firefighter and serving the city of Starkville. And we welcome you both aboard. Thank you. All right, and our next four are with the police department. So first we have Kashawn Adams. There we go, all right. Mr. Adams is a Mississippi State graduate with a bachelor's degree in criminology and kinesiology. He is a first generation graduate. All right, congratulations. He has started his career in Columbus Police Department and has been in law enforcement for a year. In his free time, Kashawn loves working out and spending time with his family, and we are delighted to have you here in Starkville. Welcome. Ezra Connor. <laughs> Hand up, okay. Uh, Mr. Connor has been in law enforcement for eight years. He started as a patrolman in Grenada and later transferred to the Calhoun City Police Department where he worked his way up to Chief of Police. 
got some competition there, Chief. <laughs> Before joining the Starkville Police Department, he is the guardian of a beautiful 15-year-old girl and is very family-oriented. Ezra's downtime, he enjoys playing guitar, lifting weights. You can get with Alderman Rupp. <laughs> um, lifting weights, riding motorcycles and four-wheelers, working on vehicles and farm equipment with his dad, and organic gardening, attending the chickens. Welcome aboard. And then we have Kyle Eaves. Mr. Eaves has been in law enforcement since 2012. He began his law enforcement career in Columbus and then moved to West Point where he was promoted to sergeant. After that, he started with the canine unit for the Clay County Sheriff's Department. The canine unit, what kind of dogs did they have? That doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Has he been introduced to Kojak? Yes, ma'am. Cool. Okay. Well, Mr. Eaves, welcome aboard. And certainly last but not least, we have Joyne Watts. She's a native of Canton, Mississippi, and graduated from Mississippi State University with a bachelor's degree in criminology and sociology. She is currently working towards her master's degree in criminal justice. Joyne has two years of law enforcement experience. In her downtime, she loves attending church, spending time with family, and being outdoors. Welcome all four of you. Thank you so much. Right, um, and I don't think I have anything else to impart or any words of wisdom other than welcome to the to our new folks. So, Alderman Carver, anything, no, no. sir? Alderman Rupp? No, ma'am. You don't want to talk about your guitar thing? No, we'll have a sidebar. Okay, all right. <laughs> Alderman Brooks? No, ma'am, thank you. Alderman Bailey? No, thank you. Alderman Sister? No, ma'am. Vice Mayor? No, ma'am, thank you. Alderman Bailey? No, ma'am, uh, thank you. Okay, all right. Well, thank you, everyone. All right, citizens' comments. Mr. Turner, we missed you last time. Come on up. <laughs> this is an opportunity for people to give us their thoughts and, uh, and share their uh, considerations, comments to the board for three minutes. Everyone has three minutes. Mr. Turner. All right. Well, good evening, Mr. Board. My name is Evan Turner, Ward 7. I'm the mayor, the police chief, the fire chief, the sanitation. All right. At last, we met two. Uh, at the time off because of the mayor and the police chief uh, have uh, seem to have grandma seizures and they are nothing pretty but uh, I have to be careful because stress will bring bring it on but uh, 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 that's why I want to be careful because uh, I don't need my sister worried about me I don't need my brother worried about me either are, uh, some of the concerns of the citizens are uh, it's getting time of year and people going to be afraid of snakes and they'll be crawling in, in, in two months. And uh, uh, we just uh, like to know what we can do to, to, to uh, uh, be careful with them. And that's just some concerns of citizens. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Anyone else under citizens' comments? Any? Chief? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mayor, Vice Mayor Boyd. I just wanted to take time to uh, thank everybody for reaching out. <coughs> Loss of my son. Definitely appreciate Mayor. Uh, all, the, all of them who reached out to me, I definitely appreciate it. Me and my family. So I just wanted to say thank you in person. So thank you all. Thank you. We were sorry for your loss, Chief. <clears throat> Anyone else under citizens' comments? Anyone else? All right, seeing none, I will close it as, as uh, citizen comments. We have no public appearances this evening, and we do have one public hearing. This is the first public hearing to amend the Unified Development Code for right-of-way protection and damage to public infrastructure. And Mr. Burnett, I'm going to let you kind of do a little, we'll say song and dance, but won't mean it quite like that. Sure. Give, give us just a little background information, if you would, please, and then I'll open it as a public hearing, unless there's some questions from the board members. Sure. Well, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, yes, Board sir. of Aldermen, um, so we don't have anything in our code that addresses street damage specifically. And so um, this could be damages that are isolated. Say someone cuts a tree, breaks the street, breaks an inlet, or it could be perpetual, perennial, where you have construction, uh, manufacturing company, something comes in, breaks the street. And so we have nothing that would compel somebody to fix that. And so this is really set up to be under the nuisance section of the UDC so that it can be enforced through code enforcement if need be. Um, and as I was writing it, I realized that it really should extend not just to the roadway, but to anything in the right of way that we maintain, whether it be curb and gutter, inlets, landscaping, light pole signage, anything. If it's damaged and the perpetrator can be identified, that we have the ability to compel them through code to either fix it, and if not, then to 
take them you know, before the, the judge and address it that way. So I, I hope that's not the way we have to do it. I hope we can work with any kind of party or entity that has had an issue and broken something or damaged something. But if we get someone that's unresponsive or that just doesn't want to play ball, we have it codified to address. Okay. And this so, is not normal wear and tear. This is strictly for damage coming from a particular event or that's right. mm -hmm. continue project or something. So any questions mm -hmm. of Mr. Yes. Well, you say like no normal wear and tear is curb gumping, I guess, would be such a simplified thing. If you're saying damage from a boring machine or something, some major infrastructure damage? To something like that. Or, right or if, if, for example, there's a project that's creating major damage to a street uh, consistently by you know, heavy wear and tear from in a short duration of time, this gives us an opportunity to address that. Is this something, I mean, is this, I guess I would say, what is the quantification? Like, what's the fine structure? And then is this also coming out of a neighborhood, you know, after you do your um, final overlay, I guess, if, if, if they tear that up, is that, what, what are you addressing here? What are your major concerns? What are you getting calls about? Yeah, I think that things that are, let's say, damaged by multiple people because of a poor design, or if it's, <clears throat> you know, this isn't really to pick on people building homes. This is for, like, I would say major outfits that come in and have demolished a roadway that was in pretty good condition. Um, I would leave the, the fine up to the judge, um, you know, as far as whatever his ruling is. But my hope is that I could call these people, find them, and say, hey, is there something we could partner on to fix it? And this is just giving you some teeth to do that? I mean, if, if necessary. Mm -hmm. Hoping it won't be a fine situation. It would be them making a repair. That's and, right. And, and it would be the cost of the repair, not a fine. That's not the you know that's not the goal. It's the call is the goal is to have that repair made. To I guess I'd it. say what would be the fine if they if they don't want to repair it. If they say no, we're not going to do that. Then I mean, there's got to be some kind of fee structure associated. Sure. With it. Well, I think it, it would just depend on the damage. You know, a stop sign is one thing, and um, you know, 100 feet of road is another. But I, I would assume that the that we'd want to find estimate what the cost was, and if it goes to court, that the judge would rule based on that. But I, I don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't set a fine schedule because it can vary so much in the type of damage that could happen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Owen Brooks, I saw your hand. Yeah. As someone who used to own a fleet of log trucks, we, we face this a lot. Sure. You know, I mean, you run 30, 40 loads of logs a day across the road. You know, if there's a soft spot in it, it'll show up in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Have you guys thought, I mean, people that are doing major projects are, are supposed to get permits and stuff. You know, mm -hmm. they need getting out in front of this deal. You know, if they, if it's, it's a big demolition project and we, we know they're going to haul, mm -hmm. you know, 200 loads of, of uh, uh, truck loads of uh, rock and stuff away from this site or something, getting out in front of it mm -hmm. and, and even routing them different ways or, or uh, discussing this with them up front as far as... So we have in the past, I, I've seen this less with that, more with like subdivision work, but yeah. we have a subdivision in town. We knew that an overlay was happening this year. And so we documented this, the roadway condition, asked them to be finished before the, no, the overlay. And you know, if there's any damages, we'd ask them to fix those before we overlay. But yeah. it, I, I found it works best with a partnership. And usually we've had good luck with that in the past. We've just never had anything codified yeah. in case we were to run into an issue. Yeah. Yeah, so. it, it, can, it can certainly happen. Mm -hmm. And I've been on both sides of it. It can certainly happen. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah this is, you're moving in the right direction. Yeah. Thank anyone you. else? Gentlemen, anyone else? <clears throat> All right. I'll open it as a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak to this matter now would be your opportunity to do so, either for or against. Either for or against. All right. Seeing none, I'll close it as a public hearing. If without anything further, this is, this is no action this evening. This is just the public hearing. So. Uh, we will come back and do this again at the next board meeting and with consideration possible at that point in time. Okay, thank you. All right, um, this would be the point at which I had um, requested that we look at going into an executive session. So uh, do I have a motion to go into a closed session for the purpose of discussing the need for an executive session? So moved. I had a motion from Alderman Sistrunk and I heard a second from Alderman Rupp. Second. All right, thank you. Second from Alderman Rupp. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you would clear the room, we're going to go into a closed session to determine the need for executive session. We will come out for a call either for or against um, going into executive session. So you need to clear the room, please. <laughs>